And the winner of this year's 2015 Norris Trophy for Best Defenseman is... Eric Carlson. In June of 2015, Eric Carlson at the age of 24 would take home his second Norris Trophy, cementing himself as one of the greatest puck-moving defensemen the game has ever seen. Clutch moments and even nastier sauces. Sends gonna lead pass, Hoffman alone! Scores! I, I, I think I'm gonna puke. Drama, hardship, but more importantly, Eric Carlson was beloved by the entire hockey community. I mean, he's even one of my favorite players of all time, as he's a leader and an even better person. And after a shocking departure from the Senators, Eric Carlson has gone from one of the top defensemen of this generation to being analytically the worst value defenseman in the entire NHL. As this year, he's having the worst season of his entire career by a landslide. And at the age of 30, with plenty of hockey left in his career, on a team with more star power than he ever had in Ottawa? Why? How could Eric Carlson go from carrying his team to the Eastern Conference Finals to being the most overpaid player in the entire NHL? In today's video, we're gonna go over the dramatic rise and fall of Eric Carlson. We're gonna go over what made him such a great player and try to solve why we are seeing this dramatic fall from grace. So, before we get into it, do you think Carlson will ever bounce back? During the 2008 NHL Draft, the Ottawa Senators would make the trade of the decade, as they would trade pick number 18 and pick number 70 to move up three spots, as they had a keen eye for the young Swedish puck-moving defenseman. And well, they would get him, an extremely high risk a high reward player because the next season Carlson would return to Sweden to continue his development and this is where we would see that immense upside as Eric Carlson at the age of 18 would carry the entire Swedish world junior roster to a bronze medal finish as he would put up a very impressive nine points in his first world junior tournament and like I mentioned in my video how the world juniors can make or break a prospect go watch it if you haven't already this performance would catapult Carlson into his rookie season. 26 points in 60 games, and Carlson was very rough around the edges, specifically in his own end. But oh man, you knew, this kid was special. In 2011, Eric Carlson as a 21-year-old defenseman would take over the entire NHL. 78 points in 81 games. Totals we haven't seen from a defenseman this young since, you know, Ray Bork, or Brian Leach, and you know what? The winner is Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson would become the youngest defenseman since 1976 to take home a Norris Trophy. And at this point, the sky was truly the limit. Especially when you consider that around this time, defensemen didn't usually become this dominant until their late 20s. Carlson was looking like a generational talent on the blue line. In the next few seasons, Carlson would keep that status. Because whether or not you believe that Carlson was too offensive minded, you can't argue with the numbers. Carlson was so dominant on the transition that he is a prime example of the term, the best defense is offense. Because you knew whenever Carlson was on the ice, there was a large possibility that he was gonna quarterback a high scoring chance. And in 2015, Carlson would join a select group of Hall of Famers as he would become only the 8th defenseman in NHL history to win a second Norris Trophy. Eric Carlson earned the title as one of the greatest defensemen the game has ever seen. And so, what made Eric Carlson so special? Well, it's simple. Eric Carlson has some of the best on-ice vision the game has ever seen. And when you watch him, it is very apparent, as he will routinely, without fail, find his teammates from impossible angles delivering the perfect dish. And I mean, this clip single-handedly describes Carlson's game. Sen's gonna lead pass, Hoffman alone! Score! Now, combine his on-ice vision with his unbelievable hockey IQ, all that's left is his other tangibles. And well, he's got those too. He is also a gifted passer. He isn't afraid to shoot the puck. He even developed into a great shot blocker. Not to mention he was a generational skater in his prime. 
Even after it came out that Carlson led the Senators to an Eastern Conference Game 7, he did it on a broken ankle. If that doesn't make you a Carlson fan, I, 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 I don't know what does. Think of Carlson like a Tom Brady, you know, or just, I, I guess, a quarterback. Carlson, without breaking a sweat, could transition any play into that high scoring chance. And so not only was he racking up points, but you are so efficient that the puck is in your zone for such a little amount of time, it doesn't even matter if you aren't that elite shutdown defenseman. And to sum all this up, Carlson is just special, as he alone has now sprung a brand new generation of players like Cam Carr, Quinn Hughes, Adam Fox. Not to mention that the following two years after winning his second Norris, Carlson finished second in voting. So in an alternate universe, Carlson has four Norris trophies and is indisputably one of the greatest defensemen to ever grace the game. In 2017, Carlson would again rack up 71 points and he would carry the Ottawa Senators on his back to Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals. But they would be shut down by the Team Canada Savior. And as for the next season, oh boy. But this morning, both Eric and Melinda find themselves squaring off against an unexpected foe, the fiance of one of Eric's own teammates, Monica Carrick. Melinda and Eric Carlson claim Monica Carrick, who is engaged to the Senators Mike Hoffman, has been cyberbullying them on social media for the past six months. This is where things would start to rapidly change. Eric Carlson would be involved in a massive bullying scandal involving Mike Hoffman and his then girlfriend. Now, I'm not saying this led to his downfall by any means, but this combined with the Uber incident would see the Senators having a monumental fall from grace, as they would go from a Stanley Cup caliber team to a laughingstock finishing second last in the entire league. Now, add this to the fact that during this time period, Melnick and the Senators were constantly in the news for terrible management, whether it was trying to find a new arena, dealing with a new scandal, not offering big deals to their stars, if not just insulting their stars with lowball offers as it would even come out that Eric Carlson, who has done nothing but put his heart and soul into the franchise, wasn't even offered a max deal. The disrespect. Not to mention that Eric Carlson took a pay cut on his first big ticket to help the team. And you know, it's just the greatest player in franchise history. And so, after an intense summer of trade rumors, I mean, I remember frantically refreshing Twitter every two minutes for a week straight, Eric Carlson would be shipped to the San Jose Sharks in a massive blockbuster deal. A deal that seemed to be extremely one-sided, but things have definitely evened out as Ottawa ended up receiving pick number three, which turned out to be Tim Stutzla. Not a big deal. And upon arrival, Carlson would get his big ticket as he would sign a monster eight-year, $92 million contract, making him the highest paid defenseman in NHL history. And this is where public perception would begin to change. Eric Carlson would join the Sharks in 2018, but after coming off a serious ankle surgery, Carlson started to accumulate a mass of minor injuries. So much so that he would miss a large chunk of the 2018-2019 season. However, he would come back into form in the 2018-2019 playoffs with 16 points and 19 season-ending groin injury. <sighs> Back to square one. Not to mention that the San Jose Sharks would shockingly finish third last in the NHL right beside Ottawa. What's up? And considering that the Sharks have now a loaded roster with massive contracts, and that they had to trade so much of their future in the past couple seasons, this is where the Sharks would begin to implode. As this season, for the first time in years, we have seen a fully recovered Eric Carlson. And I will preface, it is a small sample size with only 13 games, but Eric Carlson, as the highest paid defenseman in NHL history, is having the most brutal season of his entire career. And with 4 points in 13 games, Eric Carlson is not even one-fifth of the player he was a couple years ago. So I guess the question is, why? How could Carlson go from beloved, one of the greatest of all time, to looking like a defensive liability? Well, the most obvious place to start is that Carlson has been racking up the injuries. And no matter who you are, this is going to have a significant impact on your game. And next, we have the more overlooked team dynamic. With the Senators, Carlson was the man. The entire system ran through him. 
But in San Jose, Carlson has to share that role with another Norris winner in Brent Burns. And it is very apparent that they have heavily struggled in understanding how to utilize their pair of Norris defensemen. As Carlson was playing in pretty strange circumstances for a large chunk of the past couple years. Not to mention they have to share the blue line on the power play. Which definitely points towards the argument of too much of a good thing can lead to negative consequences. But to be honest guys, Carlson's entire situation just seems like a series of unfortunate events. And just horrible timing. If this trade took place even a couple years earlier, I can say with confidence that the Sharks would have had at least one or two Stanley Cup Finals appearances. And the fact that he came in during a time where players like Brent Burns were taking a step down in their performance, not to mention that Joe Pavelski would be dropped to free agency, and of course, many, 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 this just in, many injuries. But to be honest guys, what makes Carlson so special? His gifted hockey IQ and vision. And at the age of 30, even if his legs slow down, even if he does end up re-injuring himself, Eric Carlson will always have that IQ and vision. And with that, I still firmly believe that even though Carlson has been seeing monumental regression, that as soon as the Sharks start to rally back, so will Eric Carlson. But what do you guys think? Will Eric Carlson ever return back to Norris form? Or is it only down from here? And if you haven't already, make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. And let me know if you want me to make any more future rise and fall videos on any particular player. Comment down below. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys later.